Okay, so I want to go into some depth on a concept and a distinction that economists like to make. And that is between a positive statement or analysis versus a normative statement. or analysis. So, the distinction that we're trying to draw here is often tricky for students. And the best way that I've thought to explain it so far over the years is that positive statements or analysis are claims about facts. So ultimately, these are matters of social science. They, when we say claims about facts, they could be opinions about facts. So it includes opinions about facts. Because often when we bring up this idea of positive statements, people think we mean that they are true facts. But these opinions could be true or untrue. They could be testable or untestable. But at any rate, they are claims about actual facts. This is in contrast to normative statements or normative analysis, which are claims about value. And when I say value here, I don't mean value in the sense of like, what is the price of something? In fact, there's an old joke that an economist is someone who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. So that would be the claim that economists are good at positive analysis, but are not good about normative analysis. So claims about value, we mean value in a sort of ethical, moral sense. And so whether or not these are opinions or not, they are value judgments. And I might sort of go ahead and then bring up some examples because that may be the best way to look at this. So suppose someone says, an increase in tax rates will likely produce an increase in tax revenue. Is that a positive or normative claim? Well, it's a claim about a cause and effect. If you do this, this over here will happen. And that either will or it won't happen. It's something that we could also hope to test with some evidence. So this is a positive statement because it's a claim about facts. On the other hand, we say, if we said, we should raise tax rates, then we're drawing a conclusion uh, that the consequences here are desirable or that this is an ethically permissible action in some way. So this is a normative statement. Normative statements are also known as prescriptive statements because they're like a prescription or they can be like a prescription. So your doctor gives you a prescription. It's something you should do. You should take this medicine. De uh, positive statements are sometimes known as descriptive statements. So you might say, for instance, think about a situation where we say, John has pneumonia. That's a positive statement. It's a claim about facts that John has pneumonia. 
John should take antibiotics is a normative recommendation. And, you know, maybe that's an uncontroversial one, but then maybe it isn't. So let's go ahead and go, okay, John has, and we'll see if I can spell this right, a pneumonia. I think that's correct. So that's positive. It's a claim about facts. And let's say we say John is allergic to antibiotics. That would also be a positive description about facts. It's a claim about facts. Now, if we say John should take antibiotics, we're making a prescription. We're making a recommendation to action. So that's normative. If we, if we say John is more likely to die of the pneumonia than he is of the allergic reaction, then what kind of statement is that? So John is more likely to die of untreated pneumonia than from the reaction to the antibiotics. Well, that's a claim about facts. It's a claim about probabilities. So notice another thing. When we say a positive statement, we're not saying that you have to be 100% certain about something. It's not positive in that sense. It's also not positive in the sense of desirable. Obviously, the fact that John has pneumonia and that John is allergic to antibiotics are both undesirable. So they're not positive in that way. This here is a positive statement. So, generally, normative statements may rely upon positive statements, but we have to make some additional normative assumptions to get there. And roughly, to go back to our first sheet of paper here, when we're thinking about acting economist as social scientist, Studying a problem, trying to produce information, then we're engaged in positive analysis. On the other hand, when we're engaged in action, so an economist or business person, or politician, or voter. When we actually come to make a decision, we can't rely on facts alone. We have to have some facts, but we also have to have some moral and ethical values that we're bringing in to evaluate the facts and evaluate the consequences of actions and then weigh those consequences against each other. So when we're talking about evaluating consequences, we're engaged in normative analysis. And so if you get down into it, something like cost-benefit analysis, it sounds like it's very cut and dried. It sounds like it's a matter of sort of, well, just add up the numbers. Um, but, in fact, cost-benefit analysis is, in fact, a value judgment. 
because we have to decide what counts as a cost and what counts as a benefit. So if we're going to go ahead and develop some wetlands, it's going to create some jobs and, you know, it's going to, you know, change the view and it's going to impact the ability of people to get fish and it's going to impact the economic welfare of lots of people in the community besides the, you know, people who shop at the mall or whatever. Um, those are all things that we have to decide how to measure them. And so we might go, well, you know, it's going to impact the uh, fishing haul of Native Americans, and we think that should count for more, maybe than the fact that it's going to produce some profits for, you know, uh, some investors. Or maybe we think that, you know, a dollar to Native Americans and a dollar to investors are equal. How do we measure the impact on animals? Or how do we measure the impact on aesthetics? How do we measure all of these costs and benefits is a deeply normative value judgment that we have to engage in. And, you know, you can sort of, to some degree, sit uh, in an office somewhere and do analysis and just sort of try to come up with facts. Um, but once you go to act in the world, you have to engage in normative analysis. And I think it's important to realize when you're crossing this line. And it's also important to realize that if you're having a discussion with someone, there's a good chance that you can settle these. So maybe settled with evidence. Because these are questions of facts. On the other hand, normative discussions have to be engaged at a kind of a philosophical level. Um, so these have to be a more emotional discussion um, about what's important to us and what's not important to us. And that's a very different sort of discussion. And often it's important to realize where you're having a disagreement over someone. One final analogy here. So um, there was this uh, philosopher, Plato, who you may have heard of, and he sort of comes up with this question of, how should a government be run? Should it be run democratically, where everyone gets a vote, or should it be run by experts? And he says, well, a, a state, a government, is sort of like a ship. And if you let everyone have a voice, then they'll just go ahead and argue over it all the time. And you know, nothing will ever happen, or it'll get steered into the rocks, or whatever. Um, so you should have expert people, just like you'd have expert sailors on a ship, they should be the ones who run things. And there's sort of two questions here. A question of destination, a question of how best to get there, and how to execute that strategy. The question of what destination we set for our lives or for our ship of state is clearly normative. What is a desirable life or society is a clearly normative question here. It may be that this is mere opinion. It may be that there are some sort of moral truths that are true in some objective sense. I don't want to open that can of worms, but you can see where that would go. How best to get there, here we're starting to rely upon a combination of normative and positive analysis. Because do we want to get to our destination by a scenic route that's slow, or do we want to get to our eventual destination by a less scenic route that's faster? Well, that involves both positive questions about what the different routes are like and how much time we'll save by going the faster route, but also normative things about how much we value scenery versus time and how to execute that strategy. This is more clearly a, a positive statement here. So this is an important distinction. We try whenever possible to 
sort things out into whether or not they're positive or normative. But sometimes there will be things that will fall right on this middle line here. So that's one of the things that economists like to emphasize so that they can really understand what people are arguing about.